Mark Cavendish HTC team bike. Hi guys, I'm Dan at VintageVelo.org and today we are in for a treat. Um, Cavendish is going for his 35th or more um, tour stage wins at the Tour de France this year. Um, it's in about a couple of weeks time um, and I've got to be honest, I have been an enormous Cavendish fan uh, since back in like, well, 2008, 2009 when he was with HTC um, and that epic white and yellow sprint train laid waste to every other sprint team. Um, 2009 was the year where Cav won six stages at the Tour um, and just defeated everyone. He was truly on fire, totally epic. Um, and to be honest, it made me a lifelong fan of the man that is Mark Cavendish. Um, so we have one of his bikes right here. Now this, I'm gonna be honest, took me years to track down. And I mean years, I really, really looked hard. Um, I almost decided to build a replica because I had no luck getting any of the team bikes, um, let alone one by uh, Mark Cavendish. Um, but eventually, through perseverance, calls, contacts, I eventually tracked one down. And this is one of the bikes he rode in 2009. Um, it's a Scott Addict. Uh, obviously, it's carbon fibre. Um, you can tell it's era straight away. Uh, exposed cabling still. Uh, we've got a, a, uh, a bottom bracket that's a press fit. Ooh, don't really like that, but there you go. Um, um, Shimano uh, Dura Ace 10 speed on here, still mechanical at that point. Um, the elephant in the room uh, is that, yes, I am way, way taller than Mark Cavendish, but Cavendish is way, way faster than me. However, um, to be able to get me high enough on here, I had to put on a Bontrager um, super high um, mast topper. They don't really have an adjustable um, seat post on these. It's actually a slide over topper that you get on these. Originally a really neat little aluminium Ritchie item, um, but that just couldn't go high enough. Um, so uh, this extra long one from Bontrager has got me in the right position. Um, now, up front here, uh, we have the uh, Pro, um, uh, Pro Vibe Sprint uh, bar and stem combo. The bars are very narrow, they're 38 centimeters. Narrow for the time, common now, but narrow for back then. And I can tell you, that is rock hard. Okay, there's no give whatsoever. That is a sprinter's dream, but we'll come on to that in a little bit. Um, of note, it also came uh, with this. Um, now this is a prototype Cavendish um, green jersey uh, Pro Vibe um, sprint stem and bar. Um, it's even bigger and chunkier than the Pro Vibe sprint that you can buy. Um, I don't think this was ever commercially available. Uh, as far as I understand it, um, if Cav had taken the green jersey that year, this was going to be put on there uh, for the, um, the final stage um, at the Champs Elysees. But he hadn't taken the green, wasn't going to, so um, it just got uh, uh, left to one side. But still a very cool item. Um, also on here, uh, the original high road wheels, which are, um, I think uh, these are zip, um, looks like an 808 at the back and a, a 404 on the front or 606 on the back. Um, they're really cool. What's great is that they still have the original Continental Pro Limited tires. Now the Pro Limited was only available uh, to race teams. It was never commercially available. Um, they often die, go a bit hard or fall apart. These are still got some life in, so I can ride these. To be fair, they're very hard to get old or very rare. Um, so I'm pretty pleased to be able to ride a set of those. Um, also on here, um, now Cav would have gone 53, 54, 55 on the front chain ring. This fortunately is uh, 53, so kind of remains within the world realm of uh, rideability. Uh, on the back here, the cassette 10 speed, and it's an 11 to 24. Um, but because it's a sprinter's cassette, the first six uh, gears are literally straight cut. Uh, so, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 tooth. Um, it's pretty hardcore and then you get four gears at the end that go up to 24 so really it's like riding a bit of a five or six speed uh, old school you, you know uh, with a 53 uh, running 11 12 30 it doesn't make a lot of difference unless you are Mark Cavendish nailing the sprint sadly not me um, but hey uh, it's a great nonetheless anyway um, enough about the bike 
sun's shining just about. Let's get out there and ride. So I'm out here today on the road of the southeast of England and uh, yeah it's a pretty nice day. There was a big storm last night so I'm a little wary of uh, like gravel wash on the corners and things like that but apart from that it's all looking good. Now straight to business this bike. So Mark Cavendish's nine, uh, sorry, 2009 HTC Columbia team bike. Uh, it is a Scott Addict Pro Frame. Uh, I can fortunately draw direct comparisons with other team bikes from that era, uh, notably the Look 595 Cockroach bike we rode last year and uh, a 2012, um, sorry, a 2012 Pinarello Dogma of Bradley Wiggins. Uh, you're in the same ballpark with all of those. And uh, yeah, straight away I can tell you it's just a little bit more refined than that Look 595. The 595 is off the chart stiff. It's totally no compromise um, to the point where it's almost a bit unpleasant to ride uh, just because of the stiffness. And that all comes down to the quality of your road service. Uh, if you're you know, in France or Italy, the road service is good, no issue at all. Here in the Southeast of England, yeah, not like that. However, this cockpit, the uh, Sprint Pro Vibe um, bar and stem combo is the most rock solid, tough thing that I have ever grabbed on for climbing or sprinting. There is no give up front on this bike, and I mean zero. It is quite incredible. Um, and as well as the sprint, it kind of helps going uphill. Uh, for my sins, I do tend to grab a bit too much with the shoulders and wrestle the bars on the climbs. Uh, I know I shouldn't, but it's just what I do. And this actually rewards it quite well. talking about the bike itself uh, I must say um, this Dura Ace 10 speed is really really good I mean don't get me wrong I love my Campagnolo but this Dura Ace 10 is spot on really really good I can see why Cav kind of didn't really want to go mechanical because why would you this is reliable super slick and clicky really really nice um, also these zips with the Pro Continental Limited tyres are fantastic. I see why they kept these tyres to the peloton only. Uh, they're kind of supple, super grippy, but really quite comfy with it. Uh, yeah, big fan. Shame we couldn't buy them. So now I'm on a slow, draggy climb. Uh, gives me a chance to talk to you uh, about Cav and this epic bike. Uh, yeah, I know, carbon, we can let that go. The colorway is really quite striking. And uh, yeah, like I say, think back, 2008, 2009, 2010, HDC lead out train. It was a, an impressive sight. Um, just awesome to behold. Uh, now, we, uh, we know with Cav that he rode himself uh, to his first few bike races uh, on a single speed BMX. He lost. Uh, he figured if he had a few more gears, he could do well. So he saved up his money, bought himself a bike with gears, went out, carried on riding to the races and started to win and then got better and better. Um, when he did join the British Cycling Academy, uh, he failed, quite famously, the power to weight test. The many should have been ejected straight away. And it was mostly the interjection of Rod Ellingsworth that kept him on the team. Uh, and thank God for that. As we know, I think it was 
2007, he joined what was then uh, T-Mobile, which then morphed into HTC Columbia in uh, 08, where he rather impressively took his first stage wins, 2005, 2010. Um, we all remember 2011, I think that was five stage wins, and the green jersey may have been four, but he took the green jersey for the first time there at the Tour. He went on in 2012, uh, World Championships uh, with Sky. I mean, his list of Palmares, Milan, San Remo, um, green jerseys times two at the Tour, uh, red sprinter's jersey uh, at the Vuelta, sprinter's jersey at the Giro, and just, you know, Olympic medals and professional wins. I know some people like to say, oh, but Mario Cipollini, you know, he's got more Grand Tour stages. But Cipollini failed to complete a single Tour de France, uh, preferring completely to dominate the Giro. And, uh, you know, slight issues with the results. Now, the time of filming this, of two weeks before the 2023 Tour de France, where Cab needs one more stage win to beat Eddie Merckx's stage win total, both joint at 34. Um, interestingly, uh, Sporting Probets, or Sporting Cycling Probets, sorry, uh, doesn't even have him in the top 10 of sprinters, um, which is the dumbest thing ever. I mean, some people wonder why Cab could be a little bit aggressive in interviews. I think it's because at every stage of the game, the guy has been, you know, talked down at, rejected, told to retire. I mean, I remember watching him uh, in the 2018 opening stages of the Tour de France when he was suffering from Epstein-Barr virus uh, with the late stage of damage data. And uh, he still looked good then, but everyone was still saying, oh, he's done, he's over the hill. And it, then the same reporters wonder why he carries a grudge against them. And I remember recently probably the best quote came from legendary director sportif Sio Guima uh, of Inno Le Mans Vignon fame. And he said, every time cycling shows Cavendish the door, he climbs in through a window. And that's absolutely true. He's only there now because of the sheer willpower and determination of Mark Cavendish to get that extra stage win. And I love him for it. Okay, I'm just on a quick descent here uh, that leads into a segment aptly named Drop to get down on the drops and sprint like Cavendish which is what I should do, but I am smacking it into a headwind. And the guys that set up the KOM were on a chain gag. Uh, so I'll be honest, it won't happen today. Sprinting machine, I can tell you. Great, well, that's a couple of hours of riding of the ex Mark Cavendish HTC Scott uh, under the belt. Um, it was really, really good. Um, a real surprise about that bike uh, is that the uh, the quality of the roads here in the southeast of England um, are really, really bad. Um, but that soaks it up really well. It doesn't bang, doesn't crash. I caught like some lumps and edges of potholes a few times. It's totally fantastic on that kind of terrain. Um, to be fair, much more so than that Look 595 we rode last year. Um, that was probably out and out more on the edge as a, as a race bike but couldn't handle these kind of roads at all um, um and uh, yeah it it's um 
It's slightly more confident uh, than perhaps the uh, the Pinarello Dogma of Brad Wiggins um, that is yet to come on one of our videos, but you saw that one on uh, a GCN video uh, not so long ago. Um, also of note, um, it's almost windproof. Now, it was a really gusty day. Like I say, big storm last night, huge winds today. Um, and I have just done headwinds, crossed winds, gusty winds, everything. And despite the deep dish uh, wheels on there, um, not an issue at all. And I think a real bonus of that would be um, if you were out of the saddle sprinting at 70 plus kilometers an hour, as Cavendish uh, does, um, it would be totally confident you could be out front catch a bit of wind it wouldn't make any difference at all um it's really really good for confidence the only gripe i would have uh, with that rear cassette being virtually straight cut um is that it feels a little over geared at times um but that's a reflection just purely because of that cassette nothing to do with the bike probably if i was a bit stronger it would be better anyway um fingers crossed cavendish uh, we want to see a, another win to take that, um, the top number of wins at the, uh, the Tour de France uh, this year. If he doesn't do it, still an incredible Palmares, still the greatest sprinter of all time. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Do like and subscribe for anything that's cool to do with riding vintage bikes. Thanks a lot.